Today I want to share with you how to make a delicious but easy soup known as beans and greens. And it's also known by the Italian name minestra. And we're going to use nutrient-rich ingredients from our traditional foods pantry. Hi sweet friends! I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, as I said, this is a very easy soup to make, and chances are if you've been stocking your traditional foods pantry, you're going to have pretty much everything on hand that you need. Now first we'll go over the ingredients, but you don't need to write anything down. If you open the description under this video, you'll see the word recipe, and there'll be a link next to it. Just click on that link, and that'll take you over to the printable recipe at my website, Mary's Nest. And I just want to mention, along with the printable recipe, I always have a corresponding blog post with all of my videos, where I share lots of more detailed information. So be sure to check that out when you're over there. Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is get a nice sized soup pot. And then the ingredients that you're going to need to make this soup are olive oil, garlic. I've got four cloves, but you can start with one if you, or you can also leave it out if you find garlic a little strong, but I highly recommend adding in some garlic. It's not only flavorful, it's got a lot of wonderful properties, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, antibacterial. So definitely think about including some garlic. Next, you're going to need some salt. I have a teaspoon of sea salt here. And then I've got a half a teaspoon of black pepper. You can also substitute white pepper if you want. Some people in these lighter soups don't like to have all of the speckled pepper. Uh, so if you want to use white pepper, you can certainly do that. And I have a half a teaspoon. And then I always like to add a little spice. I've got some red pepper flakes here, just about an eighth of a teaspoon. But again, if you don't want any spice, you can leave that out. You're also going to want one onion. He was kind of rolling away over there. One yellow onion or a white onion, uh, whatever you have will work. And it's just about a medium size one. But this is a very forgiving recipe, so don't worry if you have small onions, use two. If your onion is big, it'll all be fine in the end. Next, you're going to want a quart or four cups of some type of liquid. And for those who use different measurements, a quart is very close to a liter. So don't worry uh, if you're measuring in a liter, that's fine too. As I said, this is very forgiving. A little one way or the other doesn't really make a big difference. Now what I'm using here is chicken bone broth. If you've got that great, if you've been with me a while, you know I have a lot of videos on how to make bone broth, which I'll be sure to link to in the description below uh, and in the iCards. Uh, but if you want to use just chicken broth, that's fine too. If you want to use some sort of vegetable broth to keep this more vegetarian, you can definitely do that too. And I have a lot of videos on how to make different types of vegetable broths, especially those that are very rich in minerals. I call them mineral broths. And I'll be sure to link to those as well. Uh, but that would be wonderful in this soup. And in a pinch, if you don't have any chicken bone broth or chicken broth or vegetable broth, you can definitely use some water. Alrighty, next let's talk about the beans and the greens. Now beans and green soup, or minestra, is generally made with cannellini beans and escarole. But both of these can be substituted. Now what I've got here are cooked cannellini beans. But if you can't find cannellini beans, don't worry. You can substitute with other white beans. Some options would be like navy beans or great northern beans. Either of those will work well. And then over here, I've got a head of escarole. Now, escarole is usually in season during these winter months, so hopefully you'll be able to find this because it has a wonderful flavor and very uh, tender texture, which works perfectly in the soup. But if you can't find escarole, don't worry. Other greens that you can substitute with would be like a maybe a leafy green lettuce or a romaine lettuce. Either of those will work. Whatever you use, you want to look for like a tender, mild flavored green. For this soup, you want to avoid your more stronger flavored greens and those that take a little longer to cook that are tougher, like your kale or your collard greens. Those are best left out in a soup like this. 
Now focusing on the beans, you're going to want somewhere around three to four cups. So if you're using canned beans from the grocery store, uh, then you're probably going to need uh, two uh, regular size cans of beans. I think they're about 15 ounces or so. That should be plenty of beans. Now if you're using dried beans and cooking them in advance of making the soup so that you have cooked beans to make this soup, then uh, about a third of a cup of dried beans will cook up about one cup of cooked beans. So a cup of dried beans should cook up to about three cups of cooked beans. And if you're cooking in terms of pounds, then about a pound of beans will cook up to about six cups of beans. And if you're new to working with dried beans, I want to let you know that I have videos where I show you how to cook beans in a very plain and simple way, but a very nutritious way that helps you digest them very well. And I'll be sure to link to those videos in the iCards and in the description below. In the one video I show you just how to soak and cook beans and how long to soak them and so on and so forth. But if you ever want to go the extra step, I also have a video where I show you how to soak and sprout beans that makes them incredibly easy to digest. And really all the time is involved on the beans part. You really don't have to do very much. So that's an interesting uh, video to watch if you have trouble digesting beans. That's certainly when it comes to digesting them, make, soaking and sprouting them makes them very digestible. So I've got about three and a half cups of beans here, cooked beans, cooked cannellini beans, and it's very flexible. You want somewhere between three and four cups of beans. You don't have to worry, as I've said a number of times already, this is a very, uh, you know, home cooking type soup. And so it's very flexible in terms of the amounts of ingredients that you use. My Italian mother would call this like a uh, Cucina povera or povera cucina. I think it's cucina povera, which just sort of means the peasant cooking. And this is where you really make the most of your ingredients that are very affordable, very simple, uh, yet very nutritious. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is add two tablespoons of olive oil to my soup pot here and turn the heat up to medium. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and prepare my garlic. And what I'm going to do is crush these, remove the skins, and then I'm going to put them into a mortar and pestle because I'm going to mix them uh, or basically crush them and make them into a little bit of a paste with my salt. Don't worry if you don't have a mortar and pestle. You can just go ahead and chop up your garlic or if you want, you can uh, smash it like I'm going to do and remove the skins and then use your knife to really flatten it out along with the salt. Any way you want to prepare your garlic is fine. Now once you get your garlic all peeled, you can go ahead and put it in your mortar and pestle or you can chop it up. Like I said, whatever is easiest for you. Now, don't throw away your garlic skins. These are actually very rich in nutrition. Uh, just like the garlic, they have a lot of antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, all, all great properties. So throw these in your scrap bag for the next time you make a broth or a bone broth. I often don't add garlic when I make bone broth because the fresh garlic, because I find that it can be a little strong, my oil starting to heat up, it can be a little strong simmered for the long time that bone broths are simmered. However, I find that the skins of the garlic are a little milder in their flavor and work a little better in bone broth. And if you're just making a plain broth, they're perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle my salt right on top of this garlic and go ahead and mash it up. Well, I've got my garlic mashed up into a nice paste and now I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to prepare the onion. And all I'm going to do is just dice this up. And just like with your garlic, save your onion skins too. Now we're going to go ahead and add in our onions, oh, that sizzle sounds nice, <laughs> into our soup pot with our heated olive oil. And we're just going to cook these for about two to three minutes just to let them soften and become slightly translucent. Well, I've been stirring these around for about three minutes or so and they're softening nicely and becoming translucent, the onions. <laughs> and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my garlic and add this in and we'll cook this for about 
a minute or so before we start adding in the rest of the ingredients. And this is really, if you like garlic, oh my gosh, this is when the aroma is just heavenly. Okay, get all that goodness in there. And now we'll just cook that garlic a little bit. And as we start to smell the aroma, we'll get ready to add the other ingredients. Well, I've just stirred the garlic in with the onions and cooked this for about a minute or so. The aroma is just wonderful. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle in my pepper and my black pepper and then my red pepper flakes and just uh, stir that all up with the onion and garlic mixture. Now at this point, what I like to do is add in about half of my beans and mix them uh, with the onion and garlic mixture and really basically mash them up. And it gives the soup a nice little bit of thickness to it. And then the other half of the beans I'm gonna add in later uh, after I add in the greens and keep them a little more whole. And what I generally do is take my potato masher and just start pressing down on the beans just to mash them up with the onion and garlic mixture. Uh, but you can use like the back of a spatula, whatever you have. Now my escarole has been well washed and now what I'm gonna do is just chop this up. And there's really no particular rhyme or reason to it. Whatever uh, way you find it easier, easiest to chop up. I'm just gonna go over this crosswise a couple of times with my knife and then we'll go ahead and add it into our soup pot. Alrighty, now I've got all our chopped greens and we're just gonna go ahead and add this to our mixture right into our soup pot. Now I'm just gonna mix these greens up with our onion, garlic, and mashed bean mixture and they'll wilt in that process. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in the rest of our beans and give it a nice little bit of chunkiness. And then we're gonna go ahead and add in our chicken bone broth. Now I'm gonna give this all a really good stir and then I'm gonna turn this up to high. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and then the minute it comes up to, to a boil, I'm gonna turn it down to a medium low. We'll put the lid on and we'll let this simmer for about 10 minutes. And after 10 minutes, the greens should be nice and tender and the soup should be ready. Now, while this is simmering, I just want to mention that for those of you who are familiar with Minestra, you may be wondering why I didn't add any pancetta. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the term pancetta, what it is is a type of Italian bacon. And I realize that as someone of Italian descent, I shouldn't be saying this, but I'm not a fan of pancetta. I'm not a fan of the taste. And so I don't add that in. But if you do want to use pancetta, you just need a small chunk of it. And you chop it up and you would saute it uh, right with your olive oil when you go ahead and put that in before you add in your onions. And if you're wondering why I don't just go ahead and substitute American bacon, which I do like the flavor of, in place of the pancetta, is because American bacon has a much more uh, stronger, much more uh, smoky flavor than Italian bacon, the Italian pancetta. And I feel that it just really alters the taste of uh, what I like about a beans and green soup. That is a very mild, pleasant uh, soup that doesn't have any uh, one or the other strong flavor overpowering the flavor of the beans and the greens. So that's why I leave out pancetta and American bacon. One other thing I wanna mention, if you're new to cooking traditional foods and you're new to stocking a traditional foods pantry, I have a free pantry list that you can download. It's 30, I think it's 36 pages, and it has everything that you need to stock your pantry with traditional foods. And when I use the terminology pantry, I'm referring to what I often, uh, the term I often use, four corners pantry, which includes your everyday working pantry where you have, you have non-perishable foods, then your refrigerator, your freezer, and your extended pantry, uh, where you store your backup foods that can restock your working pantry. Some people call it the prepper pantry. And my traditional foods pantry list basically covers everything that you need. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean everything you're going to buy or everything you're going to stock your Four Corners pantry with, 
but it, it shows you the whole big picture and then you basically can decide on what you like or what your family likes or what you're cooking, so on and so forth. And I'll be sure to put a link in the description below uh, where you can you click on that and then you can download the list. But I think you'll find it very helpful, especially if you're on that beginning journey from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen and you're wondering uh, what you really need to uh, be buying to start stocking up your traditional foods pantry. Well, I let this simmer about 10 minutes and it looks perfect. Well, let's ladle out some of this and give it a taste. It looks wonderful. And this is just such a great soup to have in your recipe repertoire because it comes together so quickly, especially if you have uh, cooked beans on hand or if you have canned beans. And if you tend to keep a lot of romaine lettuce on hand for salads and it looks like it may be getting a little past its prime, it makes a wonderful uh, substitute uh, for the escarole and it's a great way to use it up. Now you can certainly serve this just as is with some nice crusty bread. I've got plenty of recipes for how to make different types of breads and I'll be sure to include those in the description below. Uh, but what I like to do is to add a little grated Parmesan cheese on top. This is Parmigiano Reggiano. It's very flavorful and you don't need a lot. And I'm just gonna just right on top, it kind of blends right in. You can also add a little extra dollop of olive oil if you want to do that. Uh, either or is fine, or both. I love the way the cheese just sort of melts right into the soup. Well, let's give this a taste. So it's got a nice little bit of thickness to it from the beans that I mashed in, as well as a little bit of chunkiness from both the greens and the beans uh, that are still whole. Okay, here we go. <laughs> mm. Mm. That is such a tasty soup. I think you're so going to enjoy this. It's easy to make, basically ready in about 10-15 minutes. And now if you'd like more quick and easy pantry meals, be sure to click on this video over here where I have lots of soups and quick and easy dinners that I'm sure you're going to enjoy. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.